everyone i welcome you all to my channel here we will be doing the obstiny course the whole obstiny course this course is targeted for uh, fmg aspirants the neat pg aspirants and the nict aspirants today we will uh, we are going to start with a topic pregnancy topic a topic pregnancy first see what is the importance of this topic what the examiner wants us from us so basically the ectopic pregnancy is a life threatening condition okay so examiner wants whenever a patient of ectopic pregnancy comes we are that capable to diagnose the ectopic and uh, uh, save the patient life the diagnose the diagnose ectopic earliest okay so that is what uh, the uh, what is the target of the examiner behind those questions okay so mainly the questions uh, came from clinical scenario okay we will be discussing the uh, topic pregnancy in, in these sub topics okay so first of all let me tell you the most important is the clinical scenario as already told by me that clinical scenario is important because it is a life threatening ectorupture ectopic is a life threatening condition so we should be able to timely diagnose the patient and timely uh, manage it okay and next is the management why is management important you must be knowing that ectopic pregnancy have two managements medical management and surgical management so if you act promptly and if you have the knowledge of the management of a topic you can save the patient from a surgery okay no patient like surgery if one acts promptly and timely then one can prevent the patient from surgery okay and last but not the least if the topic other sides of a topic pregnancy okay 95% of the cases the ectopic pregnancy is in the fallopian tube okay that is why ectopic pregnancy is a synonym with the uh, tubal pregnancy okay and 5% of the time it can be at some other sites also okay for example abdomen cervix all the sites okay so now how to diagnose those cases there are some peculiarities so that peculiarities have been recently been asked in in pg okay so though this is a very rare you know ectopic pregnancy is a rare thing and the out of ectopic pregnancy this other sites of the ectopic pregnancy abdominal this is the most rarest theek hai so if examiner wants to give a difficult question from this topic then only the examiner will give about this okay so especially i would like i would like to say to, uh, uh, to all of you first focus on the main content and then go on this okay now let's uh, see what is the presentation of the ectopic patient okay how the uh, patient of ectopic presents let's discuss the cl clinical scenario that is uh, very important for us okay clinical scenario of the ectopic patients for example imagine i am the patient and you are the doctor okay so uh, usually the ectopic patient uh, comes in emergency okay so uh, i came to you you are a doctor doctor i am having a acute pain in the lower abdomen from the uh, from a uh, few hours back okay so uh, uh, the pain is very intense so you you know that uh, now as a doctor you are a very smart doctor as a doctor you know that the acute pain when it's coming in emergency department there can be three reasons surgical obstetric reasons and the gynec reason and and how will you differentiate can you tell me that this is obstetric reason and this is not uh, gynec and surgical reason by simple one history what is that history what is your lmp right so the lmp of the patient simply tells us if it's overdue that it is obstetric patient and there can be uh, obstetric reasons okay so um, uh, next question you put to me when was your lmp okay so i told you my lmp was approximately 6 weeks back okay okay now you know that this is a obstetric patient 
and I also told you that the UPT was also positive. Okay. And simultaneously I told you that I also have vaginal spotting from last two days. Okay. So that are the three symptoms with which the ectopic pregnancy presents. Acute pain, amenorrhea of around six to eight weeks, uh, you can say early pregnancy, okay. And third symptom is vaginal spotting, okay. So this is a symptom triad and only two conditions are there in obstetric in which the patient will present with these three symptoms, okay. Once again I will tell you with three symptoms at topic uh, uh, pregnancy patient presence. Number one is early pregnancy or amenorrhea of around 8 weeks, 6 to 8 weeks. Number second is uh, uh, acute pain and number third is the vaginal spotting. So whenever in the emergency you listen these three symptoms, you have only and only two diagnoses. One is the abortion, it can be of any type or the ectopic. Okay. Now, if uh, now the topic is of two types, ruptured and unruptured. If it is ruptured ectopic, it means that in the peritoneum there is lot and lot of intraperitoneal hemorrhage, and patient is going to suffer from hypotension or fainting attack. That is what my husband told you. Okay, that she also had a fainting attack one hour back. She also had a fainting attack one hour back. Now you as a doctor, you lift your chair and you know that it is full and final. First there are two options that whether it is a topic or a motion. Most chances are there that is a motion. But now when my husband told you that this, uh, that, uh, that she had a fainting attack one hour back, now you know that there is no other diagnosis with these three symptoms if one has a uh, fainting attack and it's a ruptured ectopic because in abortion one never has a fainting attack okay so let's see the uh, clinical presentation here in the form of question a 35 years female present to emergency department with complaints of acute pain abdomen so this is the first symptoms okay acute pain abdomen her LNP was approximately 6 weeks back. So this is the second symptom. Amenorrhea or 6 weeks, around 6 weeks. It can be 4, it can be 8. Early or early pregnancy. She also reports vaginal spotting. Okay. She also reports vaginal spotting. Okay. From last two days. These are the three symptoms with which, which if the patient comes, you have two Two uh, diagnoses in your mind, abortion or ectopic. That will be clear on examination. Now, simultaneously, in addition to this, her husband told that she had a fainting attack one hour back. So, this fainting attack indicates that it is not an abortion, it is a ruptured ectopic. Uh, after that, she is feeling very weak. So you know that if intraperitoneal hemorrhage is going inside some uh, person, then it is a uh, person will feel weak, hypotensive. What is the diagnosis? Either it is incomplete abortion, no, in uh, incomplete abortion one never suffers from fainting attack. Is this rupture ectopic? Yes. If it is an unruptured ectopic, no, it is not an unruptured ectopic. And in the last, in this pregnancy with UTI, no. So answer is ruptured ectopic. Okay. Now let's see what is ectopic. Okay. What is ectopic? What do we mean by ectopic? Let's study and our uh, preparation to thoda hold the paper. Okay. Now you all know that the uh, fertilization occurs in the ampulla of the follicular tube. Fertilization occurs in the ampulla of the follicular tube. And after fertilization, this embryo moves and implant in the moves and implant in the in, uh, endometrial cavity of the uterine cavity. Right? So it, it implants in the endometrial cavity of the uterus. 
the where the same plantation in the endometrial cavity of the uterus now what does the word ectopic means ectopic means not at the normal place the word ectopic means not at the normal place at some other place and what does the word ectopic pregnancy means ectopic pregnancy means the implantation which was occurring in the endometrial cavity of the uterus is not occurring there it is occurring somewhere else okay so what is the uh, what does the word ectopic pregnancy means the implantation which was normally occurring in the endometrial cavity of the uterus is not occurring there it is occurring somewhere else okay now uh, now let's uh, let me tell you that there are uh, two things which moves the embryo from ampulla to the endometrial cavity those two things are tubal peristalsis and tubal ciliary movements okay the tubes has cilia inside it and tubes peristalsis that moves the embryo from ampulla to the endometrial cavity of the uterus okay now what all are the uh, factors which will prevent this movement of uh, the embryo from ampulla to the endometrial cavity of course tubal disease that is why the uh, all the etiology is around the tubal diseases okay so so uh, okay now i will explain you the uh, different sides of the ectopic pregnancy in the tube okay that will tell you that when uh, the patient can have the rupture of the ectopic pregnancy now ampulla most commonly the ectopic pregnancy occurs in the ampulla ampulla is this part okay the one shaded in blue so ampulla is a most common site of ectopic why because the ampulla is because the ampulla is uh, has lot of uh, mucosal folds and that is why in any tubal diseases it is most severely involved okay because ampulla has more lot of mucosal fold and that is why in any uh, tubal diseases this which is responsible for the ectopic pregnancy the ampulla will be more more severely okay so most common site of ectopic pregnancy is ampulla and ampulla is also the site of fertilization okay now the ectopic pregnancy ruptures there around 6 weeks to 8 weeks that is why we set in our mind that patient uh, if comes with ectopic will rupture around 6 week to 8 week because uh, because the uh, ampulla is the most common site okay now second is the uh, site we are talking of isthmus isthmus is the second part of the tube this is the second narrowest part okay this is the second narrowest part and uh, because it is narrow in the ampulla then the ectopic pregnancy ruptures more early than the ampulla okay then the ectopic pregnancy ruptures more early than the ampulla okay okay now it ruptures around 4 week to 6 week okay now the this is interstitium this is the part which is inside the uterus which is inside the uterus and this part interstitium is the most narrowest part but pregnancy ectopic pregnancy ruptures in around 12 week to 16 week why because this part is supported by the myometrium okay so so myometrium takes the pregnancy at the later stage to a uh, to a late uh, weeks and it ruptures around 12 to 12 week to 16 week okay so uh you can diagnose clinically where the ectopic pregnancy is there whether it is in the ampulla isthmus or interstitium but you can diagnose it on ultrasound a little idea you can get how far uh, this uh, pregnancy is from the ovary this is an idea you can get okay so these are the different part uh, different uh, time when the rupture occurs and these are the different uh, Uh, parts of the follicular tube. Okay, okay. Now we will come back to a patient which has come 
with the, those uh, three, four complaints: amenorrhea, funny pregnancy, acute pain abdomen, and yes, number third is the vaginal spotting and a fainting attack. Now, now you know that this is a patient of ectopic pregnancy, and most as a patient has come around six weeks, as a patient has come around six weeks. And uh, now you know that this patient has a topic in the ampulla and it is ruptured. And now, why do you think that pain is there? Okay, normal pregnancy, intrauterine pregnancy does not have pain. Why does a topic has pain? Let me explain you. Now we will explain the symptoms. Okay, first symptom that is amenorrhea. You know, pregnant patient have amenorrhea due to pregnancy. Second symptom, pain. Now the tube is very narrow. As the embryo grows, the tube stretches. The stretching of the polypic tube also stretches the adjacent peritoneum. Okay, also stretches the adjacent peritoneum. And when the adjacent peritoneum is stretched, the patient suffers pain. Okay, the patient suffers pain. So now third symptom is vaginal spotting. So now let's see why the vaginal spotting in others. We know that the pregnancy, the embryo is implanted in the tube. Now that then implantation leads to stretching of the tube. That stretching the tube cause vascular insufficiency. The vascular supply decreases. And decrease in the vascular supply leads to the fetal loss. Okay. Now you know that in the normal intrauterine pregnancy, mind it, I am saying it's a normal intrauterine pregnancy. In the normal intrauterine pregnancy, embryos, trophoblast cells, they synthesize XCG. XCG maintains corpus luteum, survives the corpus luteum. And corpus luteum will synthesizes progesterone, which is responsible for maintaining the pregnancy. Once again, this is a basic thing. Okay, the fetus or the embryo synthesizes HCG. The trophoblast cells of the embryo synthesize HCG. HCG maintains the corpus luteum. Don't let it die. Okay, and this corpus luteum synthesizes progesterone, which uh, uh, maintains the pregnancy or maintains the fetus. Okay, now in the topic pregnancy, the fetus is here in the the embryo is here in the tube. Now the tube. Ectopic pregnancy, this uh, ectopic fetus, it synthesizes HCG and and then the, due to the uh, and it contains the corpus luteum. This embryo it synthesizes HCG. HCG contains the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum secretes progesterone and that progesterone contains the pregnancy. This is also have have to say in that topic pregnancy. Now, when the fetal loss occurs, fetal loss occurs, HCG is not produced and thereby progesterone is also not produced. Okay, stop fetal loss stops the HCG production and fetal loss stops the progesterone release. Okay, and when progesterone release is stopped, it leads to progesterone withdrawal and then when you know there is a progesterone withdrawal, there is vaginal spotting. Okay, so now fourth symptom, fainting attack. Why patient suffers from fainting attack? Because, because when there is overstretching of the follicular tube, it tears the the growing embryos, overstretch the follicular tube, it tears the follicular tube, and also tears the nearby arteries, leading to the intrabalutinian hemorrhage and thereby hypotension and patient suffers from fainting attack. Now we have discussed that tubal diseases leads to a topic. Tubal diseases stops the embryo from moving into the endometrial cavity. Now what are other tubal diseases? Which tubal factors are more important and which are less important? So that we come to know that this patient is more prone to a topic and this patient is less prone to a topic. Let's see. So in the exam, the questions are asked that which is the more important and which is less important. That is why I have listed it from more important to less important below. Okay. So most important factor is history of previous topic. If the patient had previous topic, there are high chances that patient will have a topic pregnancy in the next pregnancy also. Okay. And the most important 
factor history of PID or sarcoidosis. Okay, PID or sarcoidosis is the second most important factor, but it's the most common. Okay, you know that. You know that that uh, in, uh, primary gravidas also have a topic, so they will not have the, this history of a topic pregnancy. So PID is the most common, and history of PID is the second most important. Third is history of infertility. We know that infertility more, uh, in 25 to 30 percent occurs due to dual factors, dual diseases. So history of infertility is the third most important factor. Fourth factor is history of tubal surgery. Which tubal surgeons predispose the patient? So if there is tubal surgery, peristalsis in women might get impaired and severely women also get impaired. Okay, so which are the tubal surgeons? Tubectomy. Yes, we have the tubectomy to stop the pregnancy, to stop conceiving the lady from conceiving. Yes, but tubectomy can fail. Tubectomy also can fail. Okay, so tubectomy or recanalization, you can say that recanalization is in, is, uh, in the recanalization, there are also chances that patient can have ectopic. Next is history of failed contraception. Whenever contraception fails, there are chances. You know that. In contraception, the chances of pregnancy are very less. So, the chances of ectopic pregnancy are very, very less. But since if it fails, then the chances of uh, ectopic pregnancy should be ruled out. Okay? Tubectomy have maximum chances, then melena, then property, then progesterone, then combined oral contraceptives. Since for combined oral contraceptives have the least chances, so they are given in the ectopic pregnancy. Now let's see. No. Now let's come back to our patient. Let's come back to me. Now you have diagnosed and I am having a ectopic pregnancy. You have called the gynecological consultant that please come and do, uh, do manage the patient. And now you have prepared uh, the, uh, you have started the resuscitation measures. You have started arranging the blood, you have started the fluid, you have started uh, told the ODP, you have told the anesthetist that do come, we have an emergency of ectopic pregnancy. And gynecologist is to come in. Now you have to examine the patient, otherwise, if it is, uh, and you will have to examine the patient and confirm the finding that whether this patient is uh, really a topic pregnancy, the one, the thing which you are diagnosed with, the history is a fact or not, it's true or not. So let's see what are the findings in unruptured ectopic and ruptured ectopic on examination. In unruptured ectopic, the vitals are stable. Okay, because it is unruptured, but in rupture ectopic, as there is a lot of intraperitoneal hemorrhage, there is tachycardia and hypertension, you go on to see hypertension, and there is also one can see the pattern if it is a very late rupture. Okay, per abdomen, there, uh, in the unruptured ectopic, PA will be soft, but there will be tenderness because a uh, tube is having a next and mass. Patient will feel pain when someone will touch the abdomen. In the ruptured pregnancy, the tube will, uh, the abdomen will be extended and there will be tenderness will be much, much higher. There will be guarding and rigidity too because now all of the peritoneum there is a blood. Okay? PV. What are the findings when we take on PV? The uterus is of the normal size in unruptured topic. Why? Because we are not having the pregnancy in the endometrial cavity. We are having the pregnancy in the follicular tube. So we will feel the nexal mass in the respective fornix. Right? So this finding is a very important finding and this differentiates the patient is of topic and not of abortion. Okay? Okay? So this finding that uterus is normal. This is a very significant finding and the nexal mass in the fornix, this says that this is not a motion and this is a ectopic pregnancy. What happens in the case of rupture ectopic? In the rupture ectopic, on the, there is cervical motion tenderness. What is cervical motion tenderness? Cervical motion tenderness means when do I do it? Peritoneum and patient is feeling pain. When we move the cervix, 
by moving the cervix the peritoneum also moves on the already irritated peritoneum now gets more irritated and patient feels tenderness that is cervical motion tenderness this cervical motion tenderness is present only in two conditions one is pid in the knee and another is ectopic pregnancy so if you uh, get this cervical motion tenderness is diagnostic of rupture ectopic next is uterus normal size again bilateral uh, here we will have bilateral and external tenderness why because here the patient is having yes here the patient is having blood in the peritoneum so and that blood is not only one side it is uh, on the both the side so we will have bilateral and external tenderness patient will not let you feel the tendinitis mass okay okay and there is bilateral and external fullness because the uh, blood fills the both the fullness and you will feel the bilateral fullness so this kd finding confirms your diagnosis the diagnosis which you have made from the history now you are yes yes you got this finding from the doctors now you are relaxed and this is the patient of the ectopic pregnancy and i was right now what are the investigation we will uh, do to support our uh, uh, to support our findings okay so uh, if it's a rupture ectopic then you have any less time but if consultant is coming and you have time and you can ask your radiologist uh, 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 radio diagnostic friend to please make it quick it's an emergency i want to confirm then only okay otherwise in unruptured ectopic we have a lot of time so you see the investigation of the choice is transvaginal scan okay so in the question there is a list of investigation even there is written in one so even uh, in the panel to uh, to mri tv is transvaginal scanning is preferred okay because it helps us to differentiate the ectopic from abortion and it also helps us to uh, have a very clear view of the uh, uh, adnexal masses and also of the uterus okay so in the uh, transvaginal scan the uterus will be active because uterus is not having the pregnancy who is having the pregnancy of tube is having so we will see a adnexal mass and that adnexal mass will be complex because it's not a normal pregnancy you will not see a very beautiful gestational sac fetal node and all those things yolk sac it will be complex because nearby the tube there is swelling there is stretching of the tube is uh, is being going on right so you will see a complex adnexal mass where there is on the side where there is ectopic and the uterus will be empty yes endometrium will be thicken because uterus was prepared for that okay now if uh, the ultrasound do not confirm your finding okay you don't get all this finding the another test which you can do is serial bladder test but the investigation of the choice will always be will always be the transvaginal scan what is serial bladder test now you know that this pregnancy not a normal pregnancy it is an ectopic pregnancy it is in the follicular tube so uh, the that uh, uh, the endometrium which was uh, being prepared in the secretory phase of the uh, menstruation is not available here in the tube it's not a nice implantation it is a disease it's a pathological implantation so the beta hcg which was synthesized Uh, which was being synthesized by the trophoblast cells will be not uh, uh, that efficient is released or secreted okay beta hcg that was secreted by the trophoblast cell will be not released in that amount it will be released in lesser amount okay in normal uh, pregnancy the beta hcg will is will uh, get doubles in 48 hours or 2 days okay for example if the beta hcg value is 1000 ml international unit then it in 48 hours it doubles to 2000 and then it doubles in the next two days or 48 hours it doubles to 4000 and next two days 8000 but now this is an ectopic pregnancy this is an ectopic pregnancy it will not double up in 48 hours because there is uh, the this pregnancy is not being supported by the endometrium there is no endometrium in the tube Now beta hcg will be secreted. It will increase with the increased gestation, but it will be increased less. So if there is a uh, th thousand beta hcg 
after two days it will be fifteen hundred. There will be no doubling. So if we go for serial killer CTSA, if we don't have uh, the findings on the scan, and if we have a time, it's not a ruptured pathway, then we can go for serial killer CTSA. In the serial killer CTSA, we will not find there is no doubling in.
when that surgery is known as salpingotomy salpingotomy but this is a obsolete procedure salpingotomy and making both are the obsolete procedure this is now the next is salpingectomy what is salpingectomy remove the tube and if it's a remove the tube and clear the blood okay so this salpingectomy is done in the case if it is ruptured the tube and in the patient don't want to save it my family is complete so oh what is surgery with the consultant will do is sarpen check me okay other signs of ectopic now let's see what are the other signs of ectopic most commonly ectopic occurs in the tube okay so oh, now second most common sign is ovarian so the criteria which diagnoses speech and burp speech and burp the uh, all this criteria revolves around this that the pregnancy is there only in the ovary tube is normal uterus is normal okay all this that this pregnancy is not migrated from tube or uterus to the ovary and was primarily there only so the criteria has three four points and the, uh, all the criteria is focused all around that uh, the pregnancy was uh, uh, primarily there only not to remember this study it is known the name spinger bog criteria and this is the second most common sign of topic pregnancy now the next sign is abdomen abdomen on uh, the criteria is to be for it okay and it can go up till 40 weeks without rupture and pregnancy abdomen is in the peritoneal cavity if the pregnancy progresses there if the fetus finds to the condition they have to progress then that pregnancy goes up till 40 weeks without rupture can go up till 40 weeks without rupture okay now cervical pregnancy the uh, the uh, pregnancy can also implant in the cervix there is uh, the criteria are uh, named is palmen and rubel this is the most rarest site are for rarest and are for rubel okay and uh, the patient how the patient of cervical uh, top present is the patient will have severe vaginal bleeding in early pregnancy okay, this is vaginal bleeding mind it severe vaginal bleeding in early pregnancy is characteristic of cervical pregnancy okay now you know, the last topic heterotopic pregnancy what is heterotopic pregnancy it means there are two pregnancy one in the uterus and one in the fallopian tube okay one in the uterus and one in the fallopian tube we cannot give the medical management in this case okay because if we are going, uh, going to give medical management i forgot to tell you that in medical management the drug of the choice is injection methotrexate okay that kills the fetus uh, and helps it okay heterotopic pregnancy there are two pregnancy one is in the uterus and second is in the for uh, tube okay topic pregnancy so we will not give medical management because all patient might needs a uterine pregnancy right so when we do give medical management it will give the uterine pregnancy also and the like topic pregnancy also so we will do the salpingectomy or salpingectomy as per the condition of the topic and most common the uterus uh, pregnancy continues okay mostly 99% of the cases the uterus pregnancy continues without any problem okay so that was all about the ectopic pregnancy so uh, the, uh, the notes of this uh, the notes of this ectopic pregnancy you will find it on my telegram channel dr rana d r rana r a n a o b g okay and uh, there you all can also get 50 60 questions to practice uh, uh, to practice because only practicing the question will make to clear the exam okay so uh, soon we will meet with the next topic abortion thank you